Hi there, how's it? In the name of Christ, it's your girl Cranky. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're together and in a bunch. Um, it's a power cut, yet again, and so that's why I'm coming from the car. There's not adequate lighting anywhere else, and on top of that, I, I want privacy. So, who South Africa, like, I really don't know when this whole situation is going to stop, but my whole entire life, basically now, is revolved around creating some kind of an optimal roster for power cuts for myself uh, as to how to work last night there was a power cut at midnight and i didn't expect it to come i was in the middle of my edits i was running around them swimmingly really trusting that there's not going to be one and then it came i was like okay so who lives like this who lives like this basically you're giving me the shakes you're giving me the shivers and i just i don't get what's going on who in the world lives like this that is just the thing planning around disappointment planning around somebody being predictably a particular way when that is your way of life but as opposed to it being a country that is doing this to you it's a person I'm sorry, there are literally too many human individuals on the planet that are having to endure that level of psychosis from the individuals in their lives. South Africa is an irresponsible country. It's been irresponsible, frankly, all the way going back into the days of apartheid. But we thought that because of having conquered apartheid and the black government coming on board and black people therefore being given an opportunity to do a new thing i'll change these streets that we were gonna get to prove to prove guys to prove to the world who underestimated black people indian people colored people whoever was previously disadvantaged we imagined that we were gonna get to prove that if you just give us an opportunity to do what is right we're gonna do it we're gonna do it because i mean you know the whole f uh, basis of uh, systematic oppression as it existed back in the day was it was premised around the alleged fact that non-whites let me not just say black people but non-white people were inadequate in their skills in their aptitude their ability to basically outwork anything thriving they were inadequate in comparison to white people and so we conquered a a, a narrative a pretty horrible one and in so conquering it then we're given an opportunity to do what is different and here it is that we are in 2022 i don't know like literally i don't have a calculator in my brain but just about a decade after we conquered that oppressive regime and it appears as if though we are being proven wrong by the historical ideals of white supremacy and i'm just like whatever okay so i absolutely loathe with every bone in my body talking about race because really it's a tired worn out garment that frankly we just need to like try and see if we can't concentrate on anything else but black people i i i, I not just let me not say black people because that's hyperly that that's hyper generalistic let me rather say the black regime that took us over that is made up entire mostly of black people you have embarrassed us you have embarrassed us by making life in post-apartheid South Africa near on impossible to live, frankly, insufferable. Because when you started, when you took power, you basically told the whole planet that, hey, we can do it. You guys just didn't give us an opportunity to do it. So you better help us do it. You better be okay. And you cried, you lamented to the world. Even Russia, that's currently now invading sovereign countries, came to your rescue. Hey, back before they went a little loco uh, on the planet. And here it is that we're sitting in 2022 and black people have displayed that they can literally roll an entire country down a hill like Jack and Jill to fetch a pail of water. And then they come tumbling down and Jill came tumbling after. South Africa's like Jack and Jill. They just go up a, pail, uh, a hill to fetch water, eh? to go and get something that is full of life or life giving. You riot, you march, you fight, you revolutionize, and then you come down that hill. You're embarrassing black government. You are embarrassing black people. You are embarrassing black people. You are making it look as if though we were rightly oppressed. That we were right to be subdued under ridiculous educational regimes that said that we cannot do mathematics and science. You are trying to make the world believe, contrary to your own better judgment, that we can't do anything right if at all the baton is given to us. I'm weary of talking about race because, like I said, it's a worn-out garment. And frankly, I don't like even wearing it. It's wapuhile. But this is what is going on. 
Planning around disappointment is absolutely unacceptable to a people that have been handed a baton, a baton to do a better thing. If you ask for an opportunity and you are given it then and you don't work it out rightly, it must be taken away from you. It's that basic. Like the child in school that is like, teacher, but you're always overlooking me. I want to be class monitor. I want to be the one to write the names of the kids that are talking in class on the board. I want to be the one that you trust. With the keys of the class to lock every day after school. I want to be shown that I can take a responsibility. And then the teacher gives you the shot. The, the, the teacher gives you the opportunity. And then you come and you bring all your random friends during the time when the teacher's not there. Into the class with alcoholic beverages. Because you could sneak them in because everybody gets past you. You are like the bouncer in the nightclub that allows their friends in without paying cover charge. And then you ransack the class and you chaotically, in all of your anarchy, make it impossible to live in or be educated in by the rest of the kids in the class. When then the teacher comes back and finds all the anarchy in the room that you have literally purged because she left the room or he left the room. You then cry, lament, moan, groan and complain and throw your toys out the cart when the teacher takes the responsibility away from you and you accuse the teacher of being full of discrimination. Are you serious? You've been accusing the teacher of having discrimination and there was a time when the teacher did indeed have discrimination against you. And when the teacher then got over themselves and cured themselves from their like random discrimination disease, you prove that the teacher was right in the first place. Black people are not stupid. Look at me, I'm not dumb. Black people are not lazy. Look at me, I work like a dog. I, I work like a dog. I suspect just by looking at my YouTube channel that you can tell that I am a hard worker. Black people are also not to be just disregarded because we have quite a lot of, to offer. And yet, there are a couple among us that grab power, grab power, <laughs> guys, and then they make the rest of us look really gangster. So the Bible says, hi, guys. That rags to riches is the worst thing that you can do to a person. Uh, okay, so I'm paraphrasing. I'm giving you some other translation. How can I put this word, right? I'm trying to pop it out of my mind. It'll still be paraphrased, but it'll be more aligned with scripture. More in, uh, familiar, similar to it. There is a proverb in the scriptures that goes something along the lines of. The earth cannot bear up under these things. Among them is an unloved woman who gets married. And there is also a description of a man that basically takes over the king's position. A peasant. Like a peasant that overnight becomes a king. Apparently the earth cannot bear up under that. Like if you have had a history of basically eating scraps of food. And then tomorrow you get given like a buffet for one Never mind a whole bunch of people. Like you just get to like keep going, get to get your fill over and over and over again. On that day, you're going to be a glutton. You're going to be a glutton. You're not going to pace yourself. You're going to eat like a ravenous beast. Frankly, with no decorum. Okay? Burp while you're at it after you're done. That is what happens when you just throw a whole bunch of like food to a previously famished person without training them how to eat properly, pacing themselves three meals a day. If you don't gradually give a baton to a person, they are going to wobble about like a ducky until they embarrass everybody. The black government in this country has been like a wobbling ducky. And I am not saying that they did not work to acquire wealth or not even so much wealth, but um, the power that they have today. They rightly ought to have power because they fought. They did. They struggled. They did struggle. Some of them got killed, Chris Honey. Some of them lost their cool and their street cred. A lot of them to this day are still groveling around trying to gather themselves in a bunch. They fought, they struggled, and some of them bore no fruit um, in that fight and that struggle. We're not going to take away from what Steve Biko did. But those that li did live past apartheid, who were honorable men and women who fought for us, my goodness, how they became like rags to riches. And do you know why they became like that? Despite having fought. Do you know why? Because of greed. Because of greed, guys. Um, they went from poverty. They strove. They fought. And that fighting ought to have refined them. It should have instilled in them a sense of justice. It should have instilled in them a sense of justice and dignity to go out there and serve your country men. 
Instead, they were unfortunately offered under the table deals. I am getting to a point here about the fact that we're in the last days and it appears there is no way that we're going to go else other than be in the last days. And therefore end up taking the mark of the beast, you guys. What has happened is that because of the desire by globalist elites um, to create a one world government, a new world order, and whatever it, el it is else that is happening. They've been trying to do this. I mean, we might be hearing it a lot right now because of social media just proliferating the matter and all of us on YouTube coming to give our two cents worth. You might hear the term new world order and one world government, one world religion a lot, but it has been doing its rounds out here in these streets um, for a minute. It's been a while. Like I'm speaking centuries. <laughs> It's been like this not even for decades, but centuries, hundreds upon hundreds of years. The world has been attempting to create some kind of a, unis, a united world government. They've frankly been at this uh, mission or goal since Nimrod's days in the Tower of Babel that you will read about there in the Bible, okay? And they've never ever like dropped that ball. They've been about that business ever since that minute. Ugh! Goodness gracious, I just want to hurl. Um, so therefore, when the world became increasingly globalized, technology saw it fit to suture us to one another as one global citizenship as opposed to this person in Africa, this person in Europe, this person in Australia. Now that we were able to communicate better, now that innovation made it possible for telephones to enable us to talk to one another in real time across planets, we no longer had to use ships to see each other. Um, after like months had progressed to meet one another, we had to travel by, by ocean. Now we don't have to do that. When that happened, when the industrial revolutions of this world came and improved global connectivity, more so did they then start to be like, okay, fine. So once the white man was a colonial guy that went and took everybody's land and ran with it. We can't keep doing that anymore because people are realizing it's a little bit unfair. So we're going to overcome systematic oppression um, and in so overcoming it, in so allowing uh, the individual continents worth of people to take power back from, you know, colonialism and all that jazz. We need to find a way to put them in a nice little umbrella as a one accord we need to maintain some kind of stability and order guys behind everything that human beings are doing literally is a good intention they mean well i promise you these guys do mean well it's not like they're just sitting there in a corner on some oh can i destroy the planet Every, people are generally self-preserving and so they believe that this is a preservationist method but god knows when human beings come in one accord all they do is plot and scheme against him and erase the fact of him they try to disregard the fact that he is do you understand and so in so disregarding the fact of god what ends up becoming the ultimate result just immorality just a moral turpitude that is through the roof so therefore for the world to come together in one big fat chunky order and religion is to disregard absolute truth and it is to therefore disregard anyone that stands for absolute truth and it is to therefore create genocide against those that roll around in it that's how the antichrist ends up taking everybody's general like conscience away okay he goes and creates a different truth that is basically fluid it's relative it's only true insofar as you believe in it like can the world be more nebulous i mean it is factual right now that the sun is setting how are you gonna go deny that but the new world order is trying to make people believe it's morning when it's actually afternoon and they are gonna prosper to convince the world that untrue st things are true and vice versa so that is why they're, they're problematic. They mean well. They want to bring people under one umbrella so there's less chaos in the world. They have more or less the right idea as to how things should work. But they don't recognize where it is that is the ultimate source of power in order to achieve that. Christ is the one that is essentially going to, indeed, truly, truly achieve a new world order. He is the one that's going to have a one world government. He is the one that's going to do a great reset. He is the one that's going to do it the holy way with absolute truth being the legislation of the land. Then you're going to see literally all of us come in one accord and agree that there is only one way. That one religion is true. That one a way of thinking is the right way. Literally, truth is absolute. Like, take it or leave it. You know what? Aren't you having an intelligent discussion? I will never ever debunk my tools. Come with your influential discussion as well. And I will, you know, be kind enough to be a great apologist against it. But understand that the truth is absolute. There is only one way to heaven. Jesus Christ is that way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father but by him. This has been proven all throughout history. Empirical research even been done to substantiate the life, birth, death, and resurrection, basically, of Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Everything that Christ is can be validatable, ver- verifiable um, with the, the kind of veracity that you would find in a scientific experiment. It's not just this nebulous, airy fairy spiritual thing that people are trying to force down everybody's throats. If you're an um, intellectual and an academic, truly in the sense of the word, then go and test yourself by simply interrogating the fact of Jesus Christ and you will come to realize that he is the one way and the only way to heaven so one world religion one world government one world whatever true story that it is indeed the only way it's the only way to get the all of us in a neat little bunch it's totally the only way but these random elites on the planet are run by the devil the devil of witches who this random monkey that one day made a decision to just kind of fall out of heaven by disregarding God's um, commandments in heaven. And so because Satan has always wanted to be like God and exalt himself above the most high and put his throne above the stars of heaven, because that's what the devil wanted to do, of course then, his strategy will always be some kind of an antithetical one to what it is that is the theoretical one or the theoretical one, the theoretical one. Jesus, God, is the thesis while Satan is the antithesis. And so therefore, the devil is going to do whatever it is that is count, uh, counter to Christ however similar to Jesus so it's a black and a white thing where Christ is white and then the devil is like in the blackness but the the veracity of what's going on in the blackness is trying to look like the veracity of what's going on in the whiteness meaning that the devil's strategies will be similar to God's so if you are finding these random people on the earth trying to create a one world government it's only because God is doing that the Lord is indeed gathering for himself a people that will be for his own possession that are with one accord one mind one religion one tongue one speech you know you get just one thing that's what the lord is going to ultimately achieve amen hallelujah i can't wait for that day frankly i'm exhausted of this joint right but the devil is going to try and do that in the run-up too himself but his version of events is going to be basically everything that um knocks off the fact of the only way to heaven He's going to create a one world religion where he's going to try and mix Islam with Christianity and Hinduism and everything. And there are going to be people that are like, no, I'm sorry, you don't get to do that. I'm not interested. I don't want to mix Islam with Christianity. I mean, even there will be Muslims that are like, no, Allah's God. And I don't want to mix him with Jesus. There are going to be Christians, of course, believers that are going to be like, Christ is the only way. There will be Hindus that believe in their thing. Atheists that are like, I'm sorry, no. So there will be people who won't want to take the mark of the beast because they they won't want to come together in this one world mindset. And they are also going to get persecuted just like the church is going to get persecuted in those days. Because Christ has not intended for all of us to be in one accord over a lie. He wants us to be in one accord over only the truth. So only those that walk in the truth will be fighting a fight that is not in vain. It'll be valor for them to die for the cause of the, of the cross. Unfortunately, there will also be people who belong to other religions that will die for their cause. But just like a jihadist goes and bombs himself and then finds himself in hell, so too will all of these people stand for their way of thinking for their freedom of speech or whatever and then find themselves capitulating not everybody that is going to get martyred in the tribulation is going to be christian i'm pretty sure of that because not everybody is going to be prepared to just run with this one world order because it's literally bizarre especially considering it is not the truth jesus is going to prosper for he is the king of the universe to create this order but before then the devil is attempting meaning that he has just charged a whole bunch of these people who find themselves in power in the world to come up with a strategy that is going to force everybody to capitulate under an uh, um, umbrella of um, inaccuracy, basically. Anything goes in so far as it's not Christ. The devil does not care how you get to hell, and so far as you get there, he's peaches. He wants to bring you down with him, and so if you can believe whatever you want to believe, and so, um, as long as it's not Jesus, then he's cool. So these people he sees, that they want to create so much peace and order and tranquility in the planet, that they want to do away with that which they imagine causes division on the earth. And what is the biggest and baddest divider of us all, guys? My, how we always disagree over religion. We always disagree over religion. So Satan wants to bring the world in one accord to basically agree that, guys, it's all cool. Just kumbaya. All religions are right. Always lead. Always lead uh to heaven of course not that is not uh true uh what what, and religion the thing about religion is that it also creates some kind of a moral compass for the societies within which it operates so religion dictates how marriages should run religion also dictates how we should conduct ourselves on the daily how we should raise our children how we should run governments what we should make legal what we should what, what we should call crimes religion says thou shalt not do this thou shalt not murder and so therefore we create legislation saying that murder is a crime and if at all you committed you will get if at all 
though you're living in a country that has a death penalty, the death penalty, etc. Religion has been the moral compass influencing much of our nation's legislations. A country, therefore, that is void of religion is basically this like strange little place that is attempting to operate in tandem with the conscience that dwells inside the human heart. A conscience in our minds, our brains, we have a conscience, something that regulates right and wrong, an, an equalizer, an equal, sorry, a, a recalibrator of skills. We know when we do certain things that we have been wrong. Our consciences kick in. So quite countries that are atheistic, like China, for instance, they have that thing that kicks in. They have got uh, an understanding inherently that crime, what's this, murder is wrong. They just know that it's wrong. And they are trying to create a, a governmental system based on conscience. It is written in God's word that if at all you get to heaven and you have not embraced the gospel in your country, therein there were no gospel preachers. I am, of course, using the amplified version in my own paraphrased um, version. You will be without excuse that you were never given the gospel because you have your conscience to tell you that that's true. You have the invisible qualities of God all over creation. Uh, and so therefore, you know that Christ lives. I mean, goodness, where did that tree come from? The Big Bang is, of course, absolute lunacy. It is absurd. And secondly, you've got your conscience. And so because you've got your conscience, you know inherently that something is wrong or it's not right you feel guilty when you slap a person and they did not have it coming you even feel guilty if you slap them and they have it coming you just feel compassion for human beings you know that there is a place for forgiveness because you feel uncomfortable when even a vigilante is being beaten up by uh, mobsters in this uh, community because they're sick and tired of him the fact that you feel sorry for him suggests that god has put it in us to even feel uncomfortable when we insist on punishing the wicked he is he has put in us the knack or the predisposition for forgiveness so we understand inherently therefore that things like forgiveness are a worthwhile pursuit to try and foster in our character we know that giving mercy is worthwhile because we feel bad when people get punished for the crimes that they have committed we try to rehabilitate them the human race has come up with all different kinds of structures to bring the what appears to be deadly back from being deadly they try constantly to fix people who appear to have gone way out of whack in their human thing that they are doing that that communication inside us that trains us without even us going to school about it like kids inherently just get it is evidence those are the invisible qualities of god that is your conscience talking to you so nations like china make a decision then make their decisions their legislations based on that and they then want to go and deny god and say to him that he doesn't live and they're going to find themselves at the great white throne judgment basically being told by God, depart from me. I don't know you and you are without excuse because you even had enough of an understanding inherently built inside you that there is something guarding how you think. You were able to give mercy when somebody apologized profusely. You were able to create laws that... Um, basically conquered things like lying and stealing and murder you were able to figure that out and that in and of itself told you that i live and so you rejected me therefore when a country decides to come up with a morality in its own liking they're creating a deity of their own liking in which case they're then performing idolatry in which case they then are also breaking i believe it's the first or second commandment love a god and have no other god but me right so china it's it's like body it's it's corporate a governance situation is you know without excuse but they've got a religion of their own liking and that religion is called atheism or communism whatever you want to call it okay now the devil then says your morality is going to save you what it is that is your conscience that's going to save you but god is the one that put his law on our hearts and that's why we react to certain inputs certain stimuli coming into us the way that we do we react to them by appropriately feeling appropriately if you know what I mean. We are made to feel a certain way about certain inputs coming into our space. But sometimes we don't care about that way. So if you are to give a person mercy and you don't give it, you sin. If you are to um, seize yourself from fornicating and you do it anyway, you sin. If at all your conscience comes and slaps you in the face and you still disregard it, you sin. So it doesn't matter how moral you try to be. It is obviously clear that we have absolutely no ability at all under heaven to adhere to the law of God written on our hearts. Meaning that there is no one who does good, no, not one. For all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us can adhere or even admit to the fact of our consciences being God regulating us, meaning that we are under the law. The law of Moses did not come here to rescue us. If anything, it came to condemn us. And so that's why we're no longer under the law. We, know, we need somebody to propitiate for our sins. We need someone that is entirely innocent, entirely fully God, yet also having been fully man, that he might be able to fully cover or substitute the sins of the whole human race. Christ was that man. He walked up being God fully. And so because he was fully God, he could infinitely and omnipotently actually cover billions of people on earth, however many of them there are. For he is infinite. He is the creator. There is no beginning to him, nor an end. And so he can then substitute what is a stand in the gap for every last person on earth. But he was also fully man and endured through all of our temptations. Meaning that upon conquering them and not sinning, he then on that day upon being killed is unjustly mistreated. When then the Father in heaven gazes upon this injustice, what does he say? This is not an abomination before me, for I hate unequal scales. So the death of Christ was an unequal scale. It was unjust. And in order for God to maintain his holiness in gazing upon the death of his son, he then gave the death of his son to us. He gave the blood of the lamb to cleanse or propitiate for all of our sins. And in propitiating for our sins, therefore that which was unjustifiable now gets justified. And God maintains his holiness through the death of his son. And upon his son then rising from the dead, he displays that he can also raise the, those, those that have died from the dead. Meaning that the resurrection is possible. Meaning our ascension into heaven is possible. And also meaning the purification of the human race to get incorruptible bodies that can never sin is possible. That is what it is that Christ did for us. So therefore, the solution is not so much being moral. Like China right now imagines itself moral with its social credit system that is like I said they mean well they want society to be in order they don't want you to jaywalk they don't want you to speed in traffic they don't want you to speak smack on social media so they guard and they literally try to make themselves like that omnipresent eye that looks at everything you do and then they punish you for misconduct and then reward you for conduct that is you know apparently worthy of reward that is a system that is indeed in operation as is exi that as indeed does exist in the kingdom of heaven. If you do right, you will be rewarded. Look at what happened with Cain versus Abel. If you do wrong, you will be punished. Cain, your brother's um, blood is crying out to me from the ground. And Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? Cain basically denied that he had ownership or responsibility over the life of his brother. Whereas God was like, sin is crouching at your door and he, you must conquer it. It's desires to have you and you must conquer it. And Cain did not conquer it, but Abel did what is right. So Abel was rewarded while Cain wasn't. Meaning that the Lord has a system in place for his people indeed where if you do right, you will be rewarded. And if you do wrong, you will not be rewarded. So God had a social credit score. So every wicked thing that you can think that the human race has come up with, there is a wholly pure version of it. And it comes from the one true God. The devil is ever trying to counterfeit it, but God knows that Cain cannot perfectly be holy. Neither can even Abel be perfectly holy because their mom and dad decided to go and sin against God and fall. And so because Adam and Eve fell, we therefore can not be perfect. Meaning that our perfection comes in the perfection of yet of another human being entirely. It is impossible for us to honor that perfection. So anyone at all that operates in a basic morality, a morality is just bereft. They are lost. They are in trouble. There is a gaping canyon that is their eternal existence they are about to twist in a vortex and go to the flames of hell because albeit having done right today and so your social credit score there in china is good tomorrow you're going to do something that's going to annoy them those things that are not okay in the sight of god that go against your conscience do you understand whatever you're feeling in your mind in your heart and whatever you're thinking in your mind those things that go against your conscience that you nonetheless do that those are the things that are in that vortex that is spinning that is about to tank you literally you're, you're separated from the flames of hell by a thin sheet of paper and it is about to burn but like a hole is going to be pierced into it and you will plunge into the outer darkness and in that place there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity that is what is going to happen so the devil knows that of course like the devil is he's more knowledgeable in the bible than some of the most even scholastic christians do you understand satan knows that we can't rescue ourselves so what does he do he keeps the human race uh, innovating all of these things to try and minimize human anarchy as much as possible he does all of these things to try to get people to minimize as much disorder on the earth as you can find so you f he then raises up these like globalistic elites and mind you these globalistic elites are might be raised up by the devil or charged by the devil but god in is the architect the chief architect even of their incredible insanity 
It is written in God's word that the Lord has set apart everything for his purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. So if Satan is behind some powerful man, Satan in and of himself has been given uh, uh, authority by God to influence this powerful man. That's what's going to happen even with the Antichrist. So they basically worship a sub-God. They worship a secondary God while the primary, the beyond and end all, the great I am is the one that is even behind the devil. So if you are walking in satanic power, you're in trouble because you're not at the right place. You are not worshipping the correct deity. Is that basic? So these people are given then ideas to be moral. The devil masquerades as an angel of light. So he's not going to come here and say, Satanize the planet straight away. He's not going to be overtly nefarious. He's going to come very stealthily with, uh, with what appears to be a really great idea. But this idea will, of course, be absurd in the long run when you finally have your eyes opened because the great deception has gnawed away at you whole and consumed you, right? That is what it is that Satan does. And so, uh, Satan will then, of course, inspire human beings to innovate ways to try and control the human race in a way that's going to put them in a neat little bunch through employing some of the most draconian strategies under heaven. And they're going to become increasingly forceful over time. And these strategies, if you think about these people and if you listen to them talking, really they've got some kind of a decent, um, I can see where you're coming from mindset. They do have what is good in mind. They mean well. These global elites actually mean well, but who cares what you mean when you mean well, but you're fallen. And everything you do is to see Philip all things and desperately wicked. Even your most righteous works are like filthy rags on that day. You are still unbankable. You are separated from God. The sins that you commit in the midst of all of the good you do basically disqualify you. And so if Satan can keep you in that mold of disqualification, he's good. He doesn't care that you are a super moral person. Bottom line is the God does not work on less and more or less how good, how much good did you do in comparison to evil? He wants absolute perfection, absolute perfection. And in the absence of that, you don't get to go to heaven. Now, no one can be perfect. Goodness, kids start sinning from such an early age. It's ridiculous. So nobody, nobody is cool. Absolutely nobody ought to be content with just roaming around being somewhat moral because it's going to get them hurt something bad. And that whole situation is how it is that we come to trust our governments because they come up with legislation that give us whatever it is that we need. What creates order in society? When people just tolerate whatever is being given to them. So whenever, uh, after enough homosexuals lamented that, no, but like really we're human too, then they legalize um, gay marriage. After enough women complain that we've been getting raped and we also want sexual liberty liberation was sick and tired of a prudish girl that everybody thinks is the only way to be a woman blah blah after they complained after they, the, they rioted because they wanted this sin 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 and i want it now governments wanted to create order i mean the people are crying they're complaining so let's give them exactly what they want so they got then to um legalize abortions i could go on about all these funny little laws that crept into our countries that now are so far from the law of god just for the sake of creating peace therefore when then you um have ultimately peace and people are saying peace and security peace and security all of a sudden calamity is going to overwhelm the planet that is what it is that the lord says in his word the only thing that creates true order is righteousness, guys, righteousness. And we strive against the body of death in our bodies when we get born again. Because we have a natural tendency, born with it really, towards sin. And that is constantly trying to pull us down. But by the Spirit of God, we put to death the deeds of the body. So the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are the ones that have actual true freedom. We are truly removed from slavery because at first we were slaves to sin. All we could do was just want what we want and want it now. Now, however, we have self-control, regulation over just wanting what I want and want it now. Because we understand our consciences are saying this is what is rather right and that's what we need to go with. But we are not perfectly holy. We just display that we have got the spirit that refines and ultimately is going to invest us into incorruptible bodies due to the fact that we have given our lives over to the one who has done the proper substitution for us, Jesus Christ. If Satan can prevent you from going to Jesus, then he has won, no matter how moral you can be. That's the difference between believers and everybody else in the world. We wrestle with that which is our natural inclination towards wanting sin, whereas the world is content complacent la di da in it insofar as they have a more or less general morality they're good therefore with our governments that are basically kind of cray cray right now they're trying to fast track a thing because the devil knows his time is short where they want to create order right now order right now order right now and in trying to create order right now then come together in one accord across our lands and they then um wreak havoc in all of our lives 
forcing in a society that has a freedom of expression that's been given everything that they want um what under heaven it is that is their agenda they are becoming increasingly wicked so in 1994 or prior to that just before in the run-up to that when south africa was going through what it's going through here in last russia and many other countries in the world saving south africa from its insanity ostracizing us for um what it is that we've been doing sanctioning us until we're like no but like we can't take it anymore guys love us again and upon them loving us again we get given um a new south africa but what does a new south africa look like worse than before they started out with the whole desire for morality to be the thing that reigns in our country take whatever but the thing about these men and these women who fought and they struggled for our redemption as a non-white conglomerate in this country having fought indeed rightly so as they ought to have fought right mad respect to what they did can't take that away from them don't throw out the baby with the bathwater type setup thing they upon people realizing that okay we can't carry on being kind of racist then signed devilish deals they signed devilish deals because they were a country guys they're a country and they're trying to create a one world religion a one world government they're trying to gun for some kind of a world peace state so if a nation is changing regimes if it's com if it's transforming from darkness to light in order for it to be ushered into a one world religion or one world order if at all it's going to taper in the right direction they had to come together with global elites in order to achieve this end so nelson mandela this beloved old man that has now passed away of yours was a freemason he was the chosen one to bring South Africa into a, a not so racist state. But then if you're going to sign a country into a new regime with the devil, we prayed to get out of apartheid in South Africa. We were godly at some point. But then the man that got raised up in order to take us out of the darkness gave himself to the darkness in order to rescue us. And you, no, no kingdom divided can stand, guys. And so because no kingdom divided can stand, if then you're going to sign over your whole country to the Illuminati and the Illuminati or the Freemasons or the Rastafarians, whatever they are, okay? These global elites, if you're going to sign your nation over to that, understand that they're going to, of course, have a nefarious satanic strategy. They are not choosing a man purely because God chose that man. They are not choosing a man purely because it's wrong to not choose this man because he fought so much. And this man is standing for what is righteous. So many of these men in the country and women that are currently running it and that are, that are really just kind of like draining the cow, juicing it, milking the living daylights out of our economy, they started out well. They had good intentions and they fought rightly as they ought, as the poverty-stricken strugglers of apartheid as they were. But then they become corrupted by the fact that they signed their souls over to the devil. When then it was time to change a regime in the country from a racist one to a not so racist one. When it was now time to have a new South Africa, they could not just choose anybody at all that was going to come here on some, see we need it, we've won, yes, pa 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 we rioted and now we're good. It could not just be some person out of nowhere that nonetheless fought and is actually a good guy and, you know, really serving of God. And now let's see how we can, you know, re-imagine um, the constitution of the country now that everything is free. So what became the constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1996? Eh? What became of it? We then had this excellent, what appeared to be new canon that regulated everything, that gave everybody a right to do whatever under heaven they want to do. Hey, everybody has a right to abortion. Everybody has a right to, um, to not be discriminated against based on their sexual orientation. Everyone has a right to worship whatever religion they want to worship. So we come out of darkness through Jesus Christ. We come out of darkness to the king of the universe. We pray. ANC was started in a church. We pray to conquer the darkness. And then after we conquer the darkness, the very Lord that said thou shalt not murder, the very Lord that says that homosexuality is an abomination to him, the very God that says that, um, what is this? Thou shalt worship no other God but me. You then say in the constitution of the country that he has set free. That you can worship whatever gods you want. So ancestral worship is through the roof. And witchcraft has never been more prolific in this country than it currently is. You then say in your constitution that gay marriage is okay. You say in your constitution that abortion is okay. You say, you say, you say. Literally, you come out of apartheid because thank you, Jesus, Tata. The true Tata is God the Father, not Mandela, right? You thank the Lord for getting you out of darkness. Man, katalapo. You go on right ahead to do your yoga alongside being a Christian. You go on right ahead to worship ancestors, visit witch doctors, to bewitch your next door neighbor's cat, and you still call yourself a believer. Now you're like twisting around in the wilderness for 40 years, yonke, because you got out of the land of slavery, but you are still yet to inherit the land flowing with milk and honey. 
our constitution was satanic it was satanic even though we were rescued by jesus so that's why he's handed us over to lama power cut he handed us over to leaders we approved he handed us over to leaders we loved and adored and now today they have plunged us into darkness you worship them you worship them nelson mandela died a worshiped man there was a guy a gargantuan statue a monolith frankly a bit of a nebuchadnezzar monstrosity a menacing thing of him at santon you've converted it like santon square is now called nelson mandela square and there is a big fat giant idol gawking there that people worship you worship the man to a point of calling him da 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 even gods for the jesus when he was called rabbi i was like don't know why to call me rabbi because there's only one rabbi don't call me um, father. Don't call anybody father because there's only one father in heaven. And yet we are busy calling Mandela father for what? For what? He's a mere mortal. He's late now. He's having to face the Lord's wrath for what he did to the nation. Only look at how many people in his country died mysteriously. Not his country. His family. Look at all the babies that are showing like guys in the family of Nelson Mandela. By babies, I mean kids under the age of 18. How they just dropped like flies. Dropped like flies. Human freaking sacrifices. He is your dad. These are hard things to take in your stride. I get it. But Nelson Mandela was a Freemason. In four double six triple six four, his jail cell says Antichrist. Forty four number of judgment. Six 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 number of the devil. And forty four encircling six six six. And you have gone on and created an entire public holiday out of that. Out of that. I'm sorry, guys. I love Mandela. I loved him, but I know now that he was not a man of God. I know now after coming to Christ. And these are taboo things that South Africans don't want to talk about. Your presidents, the ones that you most adore. Look at Barack Obama's popularity. It tends to be these ones that are bizarre. Everybody's besotted with them. That are super nefarious. Super nefarious. And they're the ones that have handed over our countries to the Antichrist system. Because they're all in one accord to try and create what is in their minds. Um, uh, what do they call this thing? Really, they have good intentions behind it all. But they are ultimately going to bring the world into darkness. In and of themselves, they're deceived. It's written in God's word that they go on deceiving, but in and of themselves, they're deceived. So now, nah, well, they need Jesus. That's why we need to pray for them. They also need to repent. They also need the Lord. Mandela, it's too late for him. But Zuma can still repent. So too can um, Umbegi, all these other presidents. Now, they can still repent. And so we must still pray for them. They're deceived, just like you and me. But they are highly unlikely going to repent because it is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Plus, especially if that rich man is already very influential in the world. But nothing is impossible. Now I'm saying, look at how Nebuchadnezzar done turned. Nebuchadnezzar turned. So did Pharaoh of Joseph believe um, the God of Joseph, even though I don't think he repented. But the, it is possible for kings to eventually give their hearts over to the Lord. It's possible. Look at what also happened in the scriptures Um, with who is this guy? The, the whole um, Ahab and Jehoshaphat thing how it is that the prophets of Baal were lying and Micaiah ended up spending a time in prison and being fed uh, meager portions of bread and water for rather prophesying the truth but Jehoshaphat was rescued and the rescuing of Jehoshaphat from that battle that killed Ahab I suspect caused that king of Judah to turn his heart back to God so it's possible for the kings of God for the kings of men sorry to end up being the kings of God it is it is absolutely possible however it's going to be rougher tougher for them to do a better thing especially in these last days so when then you look at South African J, that that's bought out. Basically, it's dead, hey? We're like a, a fishy that has been taken out of the water and it's only a matter of time before we breathe our last. That is what is going on in this nation. You look at it and you see over the years, it had to literally take about uh, almost like, you know, three decades. If not that, about three decades. It had to take that long, basically almost as long as it would take to twist around in the wilderness um, by the people of God who were dishonoring of Christ in the wilderness. It had to take that long for you guys to finally open your eyes and realize that Mandela wasn't that great. If somebody rocked up and preached what I'm preaching right now in, 20, in 2004 or in 1997 while Mandela was at the height of his approval ratings, um, understand, guys, that people would have just like lambasted me with harassment or even anybody all that speaks like me. So, but now, when you're living in a country with these kinds of power cuts, you realize everything is a domino, hey? Ripple effect, ba 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 ba, And this is the country that we're living in. These men signed their souls over to the devil, and nobody, therefore, because of the agreement that they had with the Freemasons, can take the power of the country, can ever become a president in this country, unless, unless they are a Freemason. It has to be a baton transferred. They could not choose any, they can't just choose a regular man. So when, if you're sitting where you're sitting, trying to campaign to be a president of the country, understand that you've got to fight on your knees to conquer the structure going on right now. Otherwise, you're not going to get voted for because they're going to choose only a Freemason. It's not that they can be unchosen. Everything 
everything can be defeated by prayer everything can be defeated by the inc needs to be uprooted they did a job they were good at some point but they fell away they like umundwadala like a one hit wonder a person from long ago that used to have real fame but they messed up and took drugs and ended up squandering their life on alcohol and prostitutes and now the very handsome guys no longer so cute anymore the anc used to be great but it's not because it gave itself over to the devil it started out all right, but it apostatized, like many of you. So what does the country look like? It looks like the ANC. People that used to love God, but now don't. They're lukewarm. And because they're lukewarm, God is going to split them out of his mouth. They are reprobate. And as a result of this, the country is twisting around in the wilderness. We are yet to inherit the South Africa we were supposed to get. Our country is beautiful. Look at the landscape. We have so many natural resources. We should not even be a third world country anymore. We should no longer be an emerging market anymore. We should be arrived, essentially. And yet, we're sitting at junk status. We've got the second highest suicide rate in the world second to no one but russia we have got uh, the, the highest failure rate of small to medium enterprises we have got um the almost one of the highest unemployment rate rates in the world we are number 10 in the planet as at last time i checked in murder rates we are number somewhere in the top five in uh, sexually transmitted disease rates including of course the big bad one that is hiv we have got such horrendous stats and there was a time right now we're number 10 so i guess we're doing better when south africa was number one in terms of crime in the world we are the worst country to live in as a woman so our femicide rates are through the roof we are looking worse than we did in the days of apartheid so does that mean that racism was good for us does that mean that that regime was perfect no it means that whoever took the baton and was supposed to do god's work rather stole from us killed and destroyed much like their father the devil nelson mandela was a freemason it's clear oh, obviously there are so many things that you can just go and look at Guyana that of course suggest to to mena illuminati right but you love your tata and your tata done gone and killed the country and every other president that has ever come into power ever since then had to agree to be part of the freemasons so cyril ramaphosa look at how he just recently got exposed with his money in the couch and what have you every president that we have ever had since umandela has had some scandal guys follow them because god is in the business of exposing the exposure of these men is your grace it is your grace as a country to pray. Now, I am not against these men. They need Jesus. Goodness, they're human. Who wants to go to hell? Who in the world wants to go to hell? No one. So Cyril Ramaphosa, I desire strongly that he should love Jesus. Because who wants hell? They don't know that that's where they're going. So our enemy is not these leaders. But what's going on right now is something worth the while for us to pray against these leaders. Because the spirit behind them is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So now black people look as if though all they can do is just destroy everything they touch. Even though that's not really true. The economy of the country has been striving against corruption. We have obviously grown. People have obviously gained skills. We have got some of the most intelligent, gifted um, corporate workforce in the world. In South Africa, guys. And yet our thing is not moving properly. Whatever is the general bus that should be moving in a particular direct direction um, in South Africa, it's not moving. And the reason it's not moving is because that's the thing about pouring water into a bucket in a my holes that's got holes that's got perforations in it when you pour water into a bucket that's got holes it's going to leak the water is going to leak so all that we pour into the nation comes out look at these power cuts guys i work like a dog i'm on time i am so backlogged it's ridiculous it's going on three weeks worth of a backlog now i am a person trying to participate in the economic um betterment of this nation but i can't even get around fast enough to getting my channel on youtube monetized to getting my subscribers and so therefore contributing to this economy with the money that i'm going to earn therein and also building the business i've been wanting to build south africa extracted me i extracted me out of the workforce you pour into buckets. How am I not participating to this economy, uh, to this country's economy? It is precisely because there is a bucket that is leaking. So what are we going to do as a nation? We have to pray for our leaders. They must repent, guys. Who wants to go to hell? No one. They're not our enemy. Our enemy is Satan. That's what's going on. That they must not go to hell like Kiro Mutwa, who went and influenced the whole country into ancestral worship, mixing it with Christianity. We have to pray that men like Desmond Tutu would not end up in the flames of hell just like he is in Amshanjango but he was mixing Christianity with a whole bunch of other random rubbish there are religious leaders in this country that are dying that we think are with Christ but they're not we have got to pray Obama Tota Etu must not continue to go to hell before acknowledging their calling Jesus Christ for crying out loud our men are busy dying when they were called by Christ because they did not acknowledge the call of Jesus on their lives and so they're dying at these ridiculous ages like 52 Umman Lomuntu like 48 to 90, 35. Why are they dying so young? It's because they refuse their call. And so Christ is replacing them with other people. 
There is a, a pandemic and issue among our men, especially black men right now, where they won't respond to the call of God on their lives. There are a whole bunch of Jonas running around in these streets, running away to Tarshish and causing a ship to like be taken by a whirlwind in the ocean. That's what's going on. It is because our nation has been made reprobate, but it is in order also that mercy might be given it. Black people are looking real bad in this country because we are the government. Our government is black. And we look like we destroyed our country. It's been black since Mandela came and took power. There's never been a single white president, colored Indian, ever since then. Bonking to guys. Black people. And we are looking as if though we were rightly oppressed. Anyone at all that still has a racist bone in their body is like, see, see, we give them power and look at what they do to the country. Power cuts rolling for perpetually. Go in a power cut right now as we speak. That's why I'm recording in a car. And last night I was slept with one at midnight. I had to stay awake for two hours. Those little TikToks that I did where I was busy singing and speaking in that British accent, like trying to be funny, sounding like a little bit of a Shakespearean novelist. Yeah, okay, I can be Jocko's, but I was trying to write out a podcast so I could get this work to you. That is the level of defeatism of South Africa. A perforated bucket is being poured sand or water into and therefore there is no retention of wealth in the land. And you think that you're safe. We need Christ as a country. We need to call a fast. Let this be Nineveh. Wear sackcloth and ashes. Pray. Humble yourself, Patong. Swabisangdi fatlachotzalona because there's nothing to be happy about. We ought humble ourselves and be contrite before the throne of grace. Lay ourselves prostrate before the feet of the Most High and ask for Him to heal our land. In the absence of that, I'm Christian. As you can tell, from my belly flows rivers of living water. What happens when Christ is upset with you sufficiently is that He's going to take me and my brothers and my sisters home. It's called a rapture, and it's kind of looking like it's about five seconds from happening. And if you don't repent, you're going to be left here in the great tribulation where the very men who have sold your nations over to Usatan will win. They will frustrate you so badly that you will want to now scoot them aside, and there'll be one guy that's going to rise up above them that's going to give you back your electricity, give you back your water, give you back your electrical, what is not, not electrical infrastructure, I already spoke about that, but give you back um your... Your, your freedoms, your liberties. Give you in the United States, they'll give you back abortion. Hey, they overturned Roe versus Wade. They'll, he'll give you back your abortion um, overturning. He will give you back everything that you want, even though Christ has no intention that you should live such a dark life. He will give you the Antichrist, everything that you want, but you're going to have to, if at all you're going to buy, sell, basically participate in the economy, you're going to have to take a mark on your right hand and on your forehead and walk around like a zombie. And Elon Musk is already creating some kind of software with his Neuralink that's going to make it possible for a chip in your brain to communicate signals into you to make you do exactly what the government wants you to do. I don't dislike Elon Musk. If anything, I really love him. I'm always praying for him. I'm actually rooting for the guy because I want him to buy Twitter. But these men who have a whole bunch of wealth in the world are causing the Antichrist regime to come about into fruition and they don't even know themselves what they're doing. God bless America. Let them keep doing a good thing and in so doing a good thing, influence the rest of the world. God bless South Africa, even though they are literally walking backwards like Michael Jackson moonwalking. God bless um. What is this, uh, the, 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 global, the, the global conglomerate that is pushing back against everybody else? God bless the exposure of Boris Johnson. God bless the exposure of Cyril Ramaphosa. God bless everything that's happening that's opening up our eyes. God bless the world for having been endured through a pandemic that led many people to Jesus. But for as long as you continue to act a fool, the Lord will stop blessing, you, blessing your lands. Cease from blasphemy, guys. It's not going to do anything for you. The sun is setting, but I'm already done talking. This will be the only chat session for the day because, hey, guys, I got work to do. Even though I've got a lot of other stuff that I need to say, I have to do edits now. I got to prioritize opting and sending over. I have to, like, you know, what is the word that I'm looking for? Plan for disappointment. When you are planning for disappointment, that is not a country you should be living in. You should not be content. You shouldn't settle. You should pray and ask God so you don't have to settle with that much disappointment to a point where you're planning for it. I love you in Christ's name, Crank K. Peace.